Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bad ayu la habita fillah From the important activities Or deeds that we should do during the holy month of Ramadan Is reading kitab illah, is reading the Quran And reflecting upon the Quran and implementing it in our lives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq to do this. And from the ahkam or the, ad, uh, the adab of Al Quran Al Kareem. One of the first things is try to be on Tahara. So when you're reading the Quran, you should make wudu. And this is ta'deem li kitabillah azza wa jal. And as we know that the ulama, that there are differences as far as holding the Quran and reading the Quran on Tahara or Ghayra Tahara but in order to be on the safe side and showing the Ta'deem li kitabillah that a person should make wudu and be on Tahara when they <coughs> when they read the Quran so try to strive to do this anytime you read the Quran Ahabatifillah the, the second thing from the Adab of the Quran al Kareem, and yet uh, billahi min shaitan al rajim to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from the accursed shaitan before reading the Quran. So say a'udhu bil a'udhu min shaitan al rajim before you begin to read the Quran, read part of a surah, or if you read from the beginning of the surah or the end of the surah. But whatever, what, what have you, when reading the Qur'an, seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the accursed shayateen so that they do not uh, try to uh, corrupt you in your reading, making you forgetful, making you make mistakes. And this is from the adab of the Qur'an. Another thing that we should be weary of, ahabitifillah, and strive to do from the adab is try to read with a beautiful, uh, a beautiful voice, you, you, the best you can. You know, read and and, and feel that 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 link between you and your Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala. Strive your best to make that attachment to the Book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which is His divine speech, which is uncreated, and make that and benefit from, from that as if just doing your best. And I didn't want to make an example, but I want, I, I want to give us a, a picture here that something that we can reflect on and relate to in our lives because many of us, probably most of us, whether we were born Muslim or we uh, reverted or converted to Islam, we listen to music at some time in our lives. And when we are passionate about that music, we sing it in our best voice, even when we're alone, even if we're in the shower. We, do, we make sure we hit those notes. We feel it and, and, and really put ourselves and energy into it. So what about the Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Shouldn't we not go beyond the bounds, but shouldn't we try to beautify our reading as best as we can and seek to really ponder its meaning and reflect upon it as best as we can. Gain the meaning, the tafsir. So, ahabati fillah, strive your best to uh, do those, those things which are part of the manners of uh, the Quran. Ahabati fillah, one of the 
things we should be weary of as well. As most of the ulama say, Jamhur ulama. Is that we should be careful. We should read the Quran with a beautiful voice, but we should not sing. We should not be singing the Quran. <clears throat> so we should not try to emu emulate uh, singing, whatever culture it comes from, whether it comes from uh, a soul based culture or a culture that has uh, uh, like the Arabic music or what have you. The, the point being is that we should, we should not sing the Quran, but we should recite and uh, recite and beautify our voices. But there's a difference between singing and recitation. Ahabatifillah, likewise, from the manners of the Quran, and this is something we have to remind ourselves, is that when the Qur'an is being read, that we should be silent. Or when we're listening to the Qur'an, even on the radio or what have you, and I want to remind myself and my brothers and sisters of this, because a lot of times I know a particular individual who we ride to work together, and he listens to the Qur'an all the time. And, and sometimes I would prefer that he turns off the Qur'an because we end up having conversations and then there are non-Muslims in the car, they speak, and he speaks with them, and it's just, and, and there's no, uh, it would be better to not listen to the Qur'an in this situation than it is to have the Qur'an and give it no, as if it's just background noise to set the, the general mood of the car or something like this. So we have to be careful of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون. Allah subhanahu wa taala says that if the Quran is read, then listen to it and be silent in order that you will receive mercy. So one of the ways we can receive mercy is by listening and being silent when the Quran is read. The mercy, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can descend upon you if you allow it and open your hearts to, to that. Another adab, a habit of Allah, is that we should listen when the Quran is read and strive to gain its meaning and reflect and contemplate and learn, uh, learn how to practice the ayats that we're, we're listening to. I want to end with this last, some very beneficial uh, fawaid from the book Al Fawaid by Ibn Al Qayyim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. May Allah bless him with genital Prados and all the ulama of Islam that have left and preserved the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam given us understanding of it Rahimahullah Jami'an in a hadith <coughs> or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَقَالَ رُسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنِّي قَوْمِ يَتَّخِذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا in Surah Al-Furqan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressing him and he says وَقَالَ Rasul, the messenger said and the messenger said O oh my Lord verily my people have taken this Qur'an uh, have, have made hajr from this Qur'an meaning they have uh, moved away from the Qur'an. And Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala says regarding this ayat and regarding al-Hajr in uh, the Qur'an, he mentions several ways in which uh, a person can make Hajr of the Qur'an, meaning that they, uh, they 
separate themselves from the Quran. The first way he mentions, he says, Al Hajr Sama'ahu wal Iman bi. And I'm just going to take part of what he said, but just the bi ikhtasar. So he said, the first type, or one type, is that the person who no longer listens and believes in it. They no longer listen and believe the Quran. May Allah protect our hearts from becoming hard and abandoned in the Quran. This abandonment is, is very dangerous. The second uh, type is Hajr al Amalubi wal Wukuf an Halalihi wa Haramihi wa Qarahu wa Amin bi. He says that the second type of Hajr is when a person no longer practices what's in the Quran and they stop and they no longer stop with regards to the halal. You mean they no longer honor the borders of what is halal and what is haram. So that means they do the haram and they don't do the halal or they don't uh, or they, you know, however, they don't do the lawful things and the commandments. And the third type of hajr he mentions, mentions a habit of Allah, is hajr tahkimihi wa tahakim ilayh fi usul al-din wa furu'ihi. He says that the third type of hajr is when a person removes himself from ruling by the Qur'an and using it for judgments and judging by it with regards to the foundations of the religion and its furur and its branches. The fourth type of hajr he mentions, ahabati fillah, is hajr tadabbarahu tadabbarahu wa tafhamahu wa ma'arafa ma'arada mutakallam bihi minhu and the fourth type of hajr is the person who no longer reflects on its meanings and they no longer uh, try to understand the Quran and g gain insight and knowledge about it and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends by those ayat. The fifth type of hajr, a habit of Allah that Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned he said, Al Hajr al Istis al Istishfa wa Tadawi bi fi Jimi al Amrad al Qulub. Ahabbati fillah, he mentions that this Hajr is the one who no longer seeks cure in the Quran and seeks it as a form of medicine for all kinds of sicknesses of the heart. And that's what, that's, that, I'm glad we had the chance to go over this because it's a reminder for me. Because sometimes you become sad, sometimes you become angry, sometimes you, you put other pollutants in your heart. But we have a cure. Allah has given us a cure already, He's revealed it. And if we only take time, because I'm sure every household we, should, we have a Quran. Everyone who's able to listen to this video has access to the Quran. And so this is a type of ibadah that we can fulfill. And this is a type of, of uh, a type of healthy practice that we can uh, do to cure ourselves from sicknesses of the heart. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those, be of Ahlul Quran, and be of those who practice and preach by it and to it and be of those who follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and be of those who reflect upon the Quran and have the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descending upon us and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive us of all of our sins and help us all to remove the filthy sins that reside in our hearts 
wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam